Hey guys and gals, welcome to another video. Pay no heed to the stats overlay at the top of the screen, by the way. It's uh, it's bugged. I remove it halfway during the video. Uh, this is a game of Rus against Mongol. I actually had a series of games against him, wins and losses, and I'm going to be uploading them in a row. We had a kind of a, a best of three or best of five, I suppose. Uh, in this first game, I'm Rus. He's Mongols. And of course, things start off with him doing a tower rush. The Mongol tower rush is pretty difficult because of a number of reasons. And if you're Mongol, you may want to try it out yourself. The Mongol tower outpost costs 70 wood and other factions have it for 100 wood. So it's a little cheaper. They also don't need to spend any wood on houses uh, because Mongols have infinite population from the start of the game. Again, better for their wood. For Rus, my outpost costs 175 wood, so it's even more expensive. But it's every civilization that's having trouble against uh, the Mongol Tower Rush, actually. Another problem is the way that the pillage bonus works for Mongols. When Mongols burn one of your buildings, they get 50 food and 50 golds from it. So if they bring it to burn, even if they don't kill it, they get that, those resources. So it makes a lot of sense for them to play aggressively if they can. And uh, the way that they avoided you from denying their pillage bonus is by making sure that Mongols are also awarded this bonus if you cancel your building. So if they start attacking a mining camp and you delete it by holding the delete button for a second, then they still get the bonus. This also works on cancelled buildings. So if I start a keep halfway, he almost destroys it, I cancel it, he still gets the bonus. Unfortunately, this extends towards unfinished buildings that have just started. So what often happens in, in a game like this or in any RTS, someone puts up a tower to be an aggressive outpost rush. You put up your tower, they cancel theirs because they realize yours is going to finish on time to defend. Then you cancel yours. But because their ranged con puts some damage into your outpost, they are considered tagged with damage and attacked. So when they cancel it, they don't see it as I'm having an option to cancel my outpost in order to not invest in a position that doesn't need to be defended anymore because the Mongol player canceled their outpost. They see it as the Mongol forced you to cancel the outpost. So they still get the bonus. So if he's like 70 wood investment, I'm like 175. He cancels. I'm like, oh, I don't need it anymore. Cancel. He gets 100 resources. Does it somewhere else? Same thing. So as a defender, you're put into this difficult situation where either you have to start and finish an outpost or you leave it at 99%, but then if you cancel it, he gets his resources, so that kind of sucks. Additionally, they make Spearman for half the cost and double the production speed, so when they're rushing Spearman to you, if you make Spearman, they're still going to get to Feudal Age quicker. So it's pretty tough. He doesn't do the scariest outpost rush ever, but it still slows me down and doesn't get me to castle as quickly. Want to see the rest? Watch the game. Enjoy. I think just full 10 villagers, like, so did he, right? It was actually a really sick game. <laughs> actually, I should have aggroed the wolf after clearing the deer. I could bring it right back. What I can also do is to send my second scout here. Just pull both wolves, send my second scout here and let him finish it. So I can bring these two sheep back. I think that's fine too. I'll take another route back so I don't waste all of my time. Bring the two wolves back, bring the two uh, sheep back. What faction is he? Mongols. I have no idea how that matchup actually works. He might like tower me and stuff, I have no idea. So far, so good. Mm. 
He probably can't be aggressive. Just because I have all these uh, scouts. Spears. Hmm. I don't think he can do that much with Spears. Oh, yeah, he's gonna tower me, of course. He already sent back. Was that worth it for him? It was a decent investment. Not a... Not entirely absent investment for me too. Overlay bugged? Oh yeah. I'll just remove it for now. Готови 
Nice. There goes his ranged. I had to move here in order to save myself. I can make a tower for defense. Since I'm not under the town center. He definitely slowed me down. He slowed himself down too. How many tickets? One. Uh, I should get his deer first. Stay greedy, stay hungry, stay thirsty. Okay, I understand. Sorry. Didn't know he feels that way. Okay, he caught two. I got away with one. Maybe I should spread my risk by putting some here. Two more, nice. Okay, 
Thank you very much for the sub. I have one archer. Four relics, it's okay. I still have deer carcasses right here. Дайте мне 
Any uh, Boyard's Fortitude fans? Uh, we're playing Rose. Died because no boy arts. <laughs> the archer won. I'm way too late with farms. Show dares to do this with 10. I dare to do it when I have 60. Uh, 
I interrupted his capture of the site. This is bad. Did I have another market? No. I think we're still fine. GG. Nice. GG. Bit risky to make farms out in the open. I should have gone farms a long time ago. I didn't even know where I was making them. I just knew villagers went AFK. Nice game. Uh, so I went inside his base, as I've seen other people do with horse archers, and I'm like, this is good, right? Like, you can just live rent-free inside their base. And then I went from 60 to 14 horse archers. And that was painful. That was painful. But I do think it killed some villagers. How much exactly? Let's check it out together. Come on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but the final moment, he didn't lose as many as initially. It was still a game ending attack though. Was it 405 bounty for a long time? Possible to snag the boars next time. Oh, true. 